Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel. I hope all is well. I hope you guys are enjoying the new year. Y'all, it's already the 3rd of January. I mean, the time is going by so expeditiously, it is jarring. My goodness, it is going, it's zooming. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about today is something that God had me study. And I started studying it, studying it about a week and a half ago. And I wasn't quite sure why. But after really sitting with the information and, and breaking it down, I understood what God wanted me to share. And I'm going to release that for you right now. So just grab a pen and paper if you need to, or, you know, whatever you need to maybe take some notes and definitely just sit with me and check these things out and see if they resonate. Before I continue, guys, I want to make sure that you like and subscribe to my page because you may not realize it, but you may not be subscribed and I don't want you to miss anything. And also turn on the notif notifications. Things are going to be hitting different in 2022. I'm prepared and I'm ready and I'm excited about how God is moving in this season. Um, what else? I want? Oh, oh, oh. And make sure you check my community page every day on YouTube because I'm posting scriptures, uh, encouraging words, inspirational words daily, just to keep you afloat, keep myself afloat and just to keep our minds first and foremost on God, because Hey, we need it y'all. You know what I'm saying? We are living in perilous times. So we have to try to find things that are going to always bring us back to the most important thing, which is Jesus Christ. So with that being said, guys, I have been led to study the queen of Sheba. This is about a week and a half ago, and I stayed up for several hours, and I broke it down. I looked at a bunch of videos. I read multiple versions of who she was in the Bible. I just did a whole bunch of just research on who Queen of Sheba was, right? And so when I was uh, preparing to create this video, I was just asking God, like, what did, what did he want me to really express out of everything that I had written. Cause I'm like, Lord, if you, if I, if you want me to do this whole thing, this thing probably going to be like an hour or two. And he's like, nah, it's just the three keys that keep sticking out. So after studying her and really paying attention to the story. So guys, I want you to go to first Kings chapter three, four through 15. That's the first thing I want you to do. And I think it's important that you go and you read for yourself. I'm going to be doing a lot of that this year too. Go and find out for yourself. We, we have to stop. We have to stop like skipping that part. And I'm speaking to myself too. It, it's, I, I really, really want you to get in there and I want you to start hearing and reading for yourself. And here's the other thing. If you happen to read it, y'all, please just jump in the comments and be like, Hey, Ro, I, you know, I was reading this and this is what I got from it too. That would be incredible. I would love to hear what your ideas and what your wisdom is as well, because there's so many people, we have different perspectives. I just know that from this space, I can see it one way. I would just love to see if you see it another way as well, right? So the ultimate three things that I was able to pull from this whole story that are most important. And if you want me to do another video on how I landed on these things, I surely will. I just wanted to make it plain note. I was able to ascertain this information by studying Queen of Sheba. The first thing that we must do in 2022 is prayer has to be paramount. Write that down. Prayer has to be paramount. Somebody write that in the comments for me. Prayer is paramount. Okay. The reason why prayer is paramount and, and you may be saying, well, Robin, duh. I mean, Ecclesiastes says we have to pray without ceasing. We got to pray every day. Duh. Right. But I want you to look at prayer in 2022 as a strategy. Okay. You know, we, if you, is, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a movie called War Room. If you've seen War Room, drop that in the comments too. That's one of my favorite movies with Priscilla Shire. I love that movie. Right. And she made a war room, which was like a prayer room. And she put sticky notes and all kind of stuff around the room. And she prayed for her family and her husband. It was a beautiful, beautiful movie, right? And everything was going really bad at first. But she started to see God move. Her husband did. It was a really nice movie, okay? So she basically, like, in my opinion, it was a strategy, the way the war room was set up, right? I want you to think of prayer, though as the actual strategy versus having a prayer strategy. So this is what I mean by that. I want you to treat prayer as if it's your lifeline. I want you to treat prayer as if it's a necessity that you have to do every day. Like 
using a bathroom or brushing your teeth or, you know, just something that, you know, you have to do every single day, something that, something that you have to do. That's how I want you to treat prayer. And again, you're probably like, girl, what are you talking about? We know that already, but do you really, really move like that? These are the kind of things that God was asking me and it was just knocking me over my head. Like, oops, sorry, God, poking my lip out. Like, oh God, no, maybe I wasn't looking at this the right way. I don't think it's about looking at it the right way, y'all, because there's no judgment and we all move differently in our spiritual relationships. But something that I want you to understand is this. A lot of you are going to see money, um, the beginnings of wealth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You will be seeing an avalanche, if you will, of Things you've prayed about in the past, literally coming to pass in this season in 22, in the midst of all the chaos going on in the world, some of you will see things that completely beat the odds. Okay. Some of you will see things that completely beat the odds. And it is going to be in your prayer time that God is going to give you what you need because you are not only seeking him on it, but in that time that you commit to prayer, some of you is going to be hours. Some of you is going to be minutes. It's going to be seconds. It just depends on where you at and how the Holy Spirit, how God himself is leading, leading you. Okay. But in that space of prayer, in that space of prayer, when you treat prayer like a strategy, once you have a strategy in place, then you can create a system. Okay. I talked about strategies and systems last year. You see, when you have a system in place, when something keeps coming up, if you could, you could plug that thing into that system, then not only are you going to see that thing run its course, but then you're going to see it produce something. The reason why I love systems is because systems produce something. Treat your prayer like a strategy. And as you treat it like a strategy, you will see how that strategy prepared you to put it in the proper system. So let me give you an example by definition, just so that I can make it plain to you. Okay. So when you think about a strategy, right? Like I said before, I would normally say a prayer strategy and I still do prayer strategies, but we're, we're actually making prayer the strategy in this particular word. This is a very specific word y'all. So I'm not editing prayer strategies or anything. Cause I still do those, but this particular word for many of you in 22 it's going to hit different and it's going to make sense to you because it's a, it's a way God has been tugging you and maybe you've been asking and maybe it's the way he's using me to say it that's going to resonate in your spirit. And then you'll be able to translate that into whatever it is he's telling you specifically for your journey. But y'all, a strategy is a plan of action or a policy designed to achieve a major or overall aim. Okay. The art of planning and directing. Right? So here's the thing. Let's say prayer. Prayer is a plan of action or policy designed to achieve a major or overall aim. Okay? So if this is what your prayer is now, if this is your posture in prayer, which is treating prayer as if it were a strategy, it's a plan, it is, it is a It is a dedicated idea that you are bringing to the Lord. Now, I know the order of prayer. When I pray, I always greet God. I ask for my forgiveness before I start asking for things. And I sit, I try to honor him with worship and just acknowledgement. You know, if I'm not, if it's just a a prayer that I'm saying, I'll go ahead and do some acknowledgement and just extol him and exalt him. Okay. So what I want you guys to think about and seek God on this but ask the Lord to help you to perfect, to perfect everything concerning you. And if possible, if it's in his will to begin that and how you're praying, ask him if it's in his will, does he want you to approach prayer as if it were strategy in this season for you because of the things that you have going, the things that are coming up? Because again, we know God is not Santa Claus, y'all. You don't just write a list of things and be like, hey, God, give it to me. Yeah, nah, you know, like it's not, it's not like that. But it is very clear that the Bible says you have not because you ask not. There are 
multiple scriptures that talk about posture, that talk about how you should speak things that are not as though they were. There are so many different things in the Bible where you are given, we are given calls to action. We are given calls to action. Calls to action are biblical because that's literally what they're full of. Calls to action, things that we have to do. And when you really look at some of those things, it's basically a strategy. The Lord is basically giving us strategy. Now watch what happens when we approach that thing that way. And then we get in position because the plan is in place. We've approached God properly. We have put those things out there and we are consistently working out that plan through prayer. A system. There's a system that those prayers drop into from there. Now watch that. A system is a set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or an interconnecting network. So this is what I was saying, right? So let's say you're praying, right? You're praying and you're like, okay, God, this is my plan. Lord, lead me and guide me, order my steps. Uh, I am, I am literally doing all you're telling me to do. I have my strategy. I'm praying. I'm, I'm my posture is different. And then what happens is, and ever whichever way he, the Lord chooses, there's then things being presented to us. And then you can take those things, plug those things in, and then you will see the evidence of a system. You're like, okay, Robin, break that down a little more to me. So this is what I mean. You're praying. You're like, okay, Lord, you have not because you ask not. And you're saying, okay, God, I really want to lose 50 pounds. I just genuinely want to lose 50 pounds. And while you're praying, the Lord is just tugging you. And you're, you're, you know, you're like, okay, God, I feel like you're telling me to maybe edit my diet. And then, you know, you, you start to edit your diet. And he's like, okay, listen, I know you've been working out on your own, but I'm going to open up a door for you to work with this trainer. I'll make sure you get the extra money to do it. He might drop something in your spirit to say, okay, hey, do this little thing online, make a couple bucks, and then you use that money for your trainer, right? So what's happening is because you strategized and you were using your prayer time as a time to not only <clears throat> confess your sins, acknowledge God, extol him, praise and worship him, you've set yourself up, you've put yourself in position in order and now you've got that system. In, I mean, excuse me, you've got that strategy in place. You are working that strategy. Now you are consistently coming at the Lord with the things that he's saying by, Hey, look, uh, cast your cares upon me, you know, ask for the things that, that you want. You know, you, you don't have it because you're not asking me once you're asking him, we already know y'all it, it ain't like, Hey God, I need a car. And the car just drops out the sky. I mean, that could happen if he wanted to, but generally it does not. Right. <laughs> so Think about it. If you are consistently praying, you are consistently seeking the Lord's face and you have strategized in your prayer hour. You are literally sitting there with the Lord saying, hey, God, I just want to spend this time with you and I want to make sure it's the best possible time in this hour. I want to make sure that as I pray and cry out to you that I'm very strategic. I am strategic about some things being clear. I'm not coming to you like Santa Claus. I'm strategic about not just trying to get things that I want. I am respecting that all through your word, there is order. And these orders, the, the, the way that you have set up order in your word, God, you teach us how to strategize. You teach us how to do things. You use a whole book in Proverbs where you literally teach us how to operate through strategy and wisdom. And Lord, I thank you because in parts of the other parts of Proverbs is when you show us what happens when we strategize and we land in the proper system. And then you start connecting the dots. Y'all have to remember in the system, things are interconnecting in a network. So if you are already in that network of strategic prayer and you are calling things out to him, he is interconnecting that for you. And he's making all the those bells and whistles go off because it's already a set of things working together and that system is in place. Cause y'all, let me tell y'all, when you do that in the spirit realm, you start to see the things manifest in the physical, in the natural. And a lot of people say this and they get angry. A lot of Christians I hear, they get mad when they say that man is not even a believer and he got all these blessings. He got all this money. He got all of this. Okay. But this is the thing y'all. A lot of people who are not believers, who are not spiritual, even atheists, right? They just understand this concept. 
They understand strategy and systems. And it's basically, you just do the work. You just, you just do whatever it requires. And that's just that you're not adding to it. You're not taking away from it. You're just doing what's required. And what I think is going on is God wants people who he has called to do great things in 2022 to understand the real practical things that are most important to give him the, the glory and the honor and to serve him best. A lot of our servanthood in 2021 will not only be from the practical standpoints of follow, following the directions and doing the things that we're just supposed to do, period, but it's also going to require us coupling those things with the things of God. It's a balance. God does not want us to be one way. Again, he is a God of order. That's why he says in one chapter, in one verse, if you don't pray, if, excuse me, if you don't work, you don't eat. But then in another one, he's saying, hey, you have not because you ask not. So one of those things sounds pretty wishy, right? Like, oh, well, that sounds like, okay, hey, I want this God, give it to me. And on the other hand, he's like, mm, yeah, but you got to work. So I want you to really take time to understand that. So it's not so elusive and it does not come off again, Santa Claus, Claus ish, <laughs> but you really begin to balance yourself out. I'm being transparent. This is something I've had to work on for so long, y'all. And if you are not careful, if you get inundated with the, when I pray God does this, he does that. Yes, he does, y'all. We're not taking away from that, but we're just trying to add more value to understanding, not just doing things practically, but balancing them out with the spiritual things. Because a lot of you who are called, a lot of you, a lot of you who are called, you are going to need both. Some of you, ooh, I got chills just now when I said that. Y'all, listen, some of you will be brought into spaces where if you just know how to do the practical stuff and you don't, your spirit man can't pick nothing up, the opportunity, you might fumble the opportunity. Because we have been in, you know, a lot of us, you know, have been in a training ground. You've been able to balance and see the things that are not so good about yourself. See the things that are great about yourself. Take the meat, the meat, throw out the bone. You have been in a situation where you're like, who I didn't do that too well. I didn't realize that, you know, and I talked about blind spots already. In fact, I'll link my podcast from last week going into 2022. And I talk about the number one thing that if you acknowledge this in 2022, it will change your entire life. It could possibly, if it applies to you, if it's applicable, it, it can potentially change your life for 2022. And I talk about that. So check that out. I'll put that in a, a link below. But with that being said, I think it's really important. I think it's really, really important for you to understand something. You are fully equipped and you have everything you need. Somebody told me that the other day and it really touched me. And it wasn't like it was this big you know, magical thing or this big, oh, wow, you know, I can't believe they said that. No, it was the truth. It was a very palpable, heartwarming, heartwarming truth that I could feel. Because sometimes when we are on this journey and we're like, okay, guys, so now I got to pray. Now I got to strategize. Now I got to need a system. It's always something. I get it, y'all. I go through those frustrations. But what I don't realize sometimes is it's not that God is telling us to go do all of this tremendous stuff and keep doing this and keep doing that, doing all of these routines and becoming ritualistic. That's not what he's telling us. Y'all, a lot of times when God uses words like this to come to us and share things with us, it's because we already have it on the inside of us. And he gives us these instructions so that we can pull from it, y'all. You know, so please don't beat yourself up. Don't feel overwhelmed. We're only trying to get better. And usually when we're getting stretched and things are becoming more than what we're used to, it may not be fun. Okay? It just may not be fun, but it's worth it and it's awesome. And the benefits are incredible. The benefits are incredible. So um, that was the first thing. I only got to the first thing, which was prayer. The other ones are not that long. The second thing that I gleaned from learning about Queen of Sheba was vision. Okay, you got to have a vision. Okay, and Habakkuk, it talks about writing the vision and making it plain. So not only do you want to have a vision, but y'all, you got to write the vision. Okay, it is important. Uh, my company, Jazzy Brand, we currently, as of today, today's January 2nd, no, 
today's January 3rd. Yeah, today is the 3rd. I said that earlier, my bad. <laughs> um, as of the 3rd, I have, I think, maybe 25 to 30 active journals that you can buy off Amazon. I'll link that below too. And I definitely have one specifically for writing the vision and making it plain. And the new All It Takes is One Move From God journals have dropped today. Those are $7.99. You can get those as well. Um, and that was a shameless plug. But hey, you have not because you ask not, right? <laughs> but I am genuinely sharing this with you guys because if you are going to be a visionary, you have to know where you're going with your vision. So not only do you write your, your, your vision and make it plain, you make it plain on tablets, you, which is basically a notebook, writing it down. If it's in your phone, if it's on a notebook, if it's on paper, but you are writing it down, you are logging it in some capacity. That is going to help you once you go from uh, syst- excuse me, strategy to system to vision, right? So it's like you want to be able to take the vision that God has given you and you want to be able to execute that thing in such a way that when people look at your life, they're not saying, oh, I want what she got. I want what he got. I, I want to get the stuff they have. You want them to see your stuff and it is so dope. It is so fire. It is so popping. Their first thought is not, oh, I want her car. Oh, I want her house. Oh, I want her clothes. Their first thought is, man, her spirit is on point. I want to have a disposition like that. I want to be kind like that. I want to, and and man, she's doing all that. He's doing all that. And I can see they're prospering in their lives. I want to know what has them like that. Y'all, we got to go up a level, y'all. We don't even want to be tripping off something from 20, uh, 2021 or, or in the past. We don't want to just be in a position of people, you know, saying, oh, you know, I admire you because you did this and you have that. No, you want to be in this thing so dope this year that people are admiring your heart. People are admiring how you have created a space in your life to let God use you good, bad or indifferent. It might leave you embarrassed. It might it might too. it might leave you heavily misjudged. It might leave you in a space where you're like, oh, my God, I don't understand what's going on. But please. Please help me, Lord. Jesus, be offense. Jesus, be anything you need to be so that this thing does not keep plaguing me. You may have to really sit down and talk with the Lord and not not may you do. You have to ask the Lord, hey, God, could you please just give me some genuine guidance on this? You know, please just you've already given me the ability. I don't need you to step down out the sky and do it because you you've given me what I needed. But just please give me the wherewithal, the wisdom, the direction so that I can I can try my best to put myself out there in a way this time around so that people could see what I intended for them to see before. But maybe they couldn't see because there were some things I couldn't see about myself. That's a word right there. Okay. Again, refer back to that podcast that I'm linking and it's going to make sense what I'm talking about. With that being said, once you have your vision, y'all, now this one, everybody's not going to like it, but it is what it is. And we are trying to get the very best of God as we, as we approach our prayers this year, strategic as a as, as strategy. And as we, we, we take the results and the time that we put into those prayers and we, we, we put those, those, those requests and we put those desires, those, those, uh, mandates and instructions and things that the Lord gives us. We plug those into systems and we can start seeing results. And then we'll see the manifestation of the vision that God has given us because all of those things take place. Now, personally, a vision, I believe, is what you have to have first. And then you can go into those other things that I I said about, you know, praying and all of that. It's up to you. I wrote prayer vision in this next one in this order it wasn't in no particular order so I just wanted to be clear about that because I do think you need a a, a place to start which would be a vision and then the other things will come in place so the final thing y'all that again everybody not gonna like it but it's the truth is sacrifice this is going to require sacrifice it is going to require things of you that maybe you have not done before. It may require things of you that you did in past seasons that you have to do in this season. This is going to be something for some of you that will really decide early on if you are going to have a prosperous year or not. It's going to require sacrifice. 
Okay, it is going to require sacrifice. So I'm gonna give you one pro tip before I close out on this one. Y'all, I'm gonna be coming on here now. So and I, you know, we can do the live chats like we did the other day for New Year's. But this one right here, I'm so glad you guys are chatting. Let me know what city and state you guys are in right now. Tell me how you're feeling right now. I'm glad to be live chatting with you. This is awesome. I really appreciate your time and listening. I want you to set up a first quarter goal list. Okay. Connect with the friend. If you don't have a friend you can connect with, then that's a, I guess that's bigger fish to fry, but I'm just going to assume you maybe have one person that you can trust. Ask the Lord if it's okay. Hey, can I share this with them? Cause you can't share everything with everybody, but find a friend that you can ask about their first quarter goals. They tell you their first quarter goals. You tell them your first quarter goals and you two hold each other accountable. Okay, my my friend that I share mine with, she had everything through March to the T. I didn't. I only had January and February. So I told her today I had to follow back up with her for March to make sure that I, I had gotten some clarity on some things. Because in my case, two of the things that I was trying to endeavor in the first two months of the year, depending on how they went, that would edit how my March 2022 would be. So I was honest about that. She was gracious. She's like, fine. So before day's end, I have to give her an updated uh, version of that three month goal list and accurately have something, excuse me, have something adequate for the month of March. So this is what happens, y'all. This help this helps tremendously with being strategic, having systems, having vision, because a part of the sacrifice is not only planning it, but really shelling out what you have to do down to the T to get what that is. Another pro tip too: anybody who is trying to do something that has to do with something maybe like, like money, maybe, you know, break it down all the way. So if you know you have a goal to make a certain amount of money in a month, then find out how much it is that you need to make a week, then break down how much it is you need to make a day and then maybe break it down to see how much you need to make an hour if you need to break it down that low. But that is going to help you. If you're selling products and services, then you can say, okay, I want to make a thousand dollars a month or excuse me. Well, a thousand dollars a day. That means that you look at the products that you have. How many of those do you need to sell in that day in order for you to make that amount of money? Okay, so those are two things I want you to rest in. I want you to think about it. And the thing that's so important, y'all, about Queen of Sheba, believe it or not, Queen of Sheba was one of the wealthiest women from what I know to date. She was the wealthiest woman that I've ever heard of, right, in, in human history, right? And it is said that her equal, King Solomon, after 700-something wives, he only had one equal, and they said his equal was the Queen of Sheba. Do some research. Do some research on that, right? Um, that says she had equal parts wealth and wisdom, the same way he did. Equal parts. So, I want you guys to understand that these words were inspired by the study God gave me on Queen of Sheba and prayer, vision, and sacrifice were three things that she did, and that was a part of how she was able to maintain her wealth. Okay. So please keep that in mind. And this is just not a word for women and women. This is a word for men too. This is a word for everybody for you to really understand that it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, whatever the case may be, you still can operate with these precepts. You still can operate with these things to provide excellence in your life. So a quick recap, prayer, strategic, Carry that over into a system and you start actually taking action steps. Remember, the Bible is full of calls to action and telling us to do certain things to get certain results. So that's not something to shy away from. These are just the practical things that the Lord has put in the word to help us. Again, things that I'm just getting. A lot of this stuff is just making sense to me. As, as much as I thought I got it and was able to share it, living it is completely different right? So that's what we want to really focus on in 2022. And the next thing is vision. Make sure you have a vision, you write it, you make it plain. And then lastly, this is going to require sacrifice. It is going to require sacrifice. It is going to require you to possibly be in a position or, or, or different times and seasons where you may not want to do it, but you're going to have to do it. Okay. It's important. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
I have all my information below if you want to contact me. I'm also doing a complimentary, a 10-minute uh, consult. You can go to my website and you can sign up for one. And then you can decide if you really want to sit and do some strategy, some branding, some breakdown, or if you need to do some, some coaching. I have all of that set up for you. And I also want to say this. I have three offerings posted on my site, but... More than likely, if you're you're checking me out from YouTube, the offering that I have for um, coaching, it is not posted. There is no information on it. That's why I do the 10-minute free consult, and then we discuss that in there, but that is not public. The other things are basically for uh, business, you know, business type stuff that's separate from YouTube. So with that being said, make sure you check out the podcast from last week. The one thing that you do for 2022 that could change your whole life and make sure you check out my journal so that you can begin writing the vision and making it plain. And remember, I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too. Have a blessed day, y'all.